Welcome, you have reached review time with Imperial, and today's review will be Thor, Love and Thunder. Let's get into it. So subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll wait. Let's begin. So, this movie, I believe, is a comic. Those who follow the comics... This is like a treat for them. The Marvel casual watchers will be a bit lost in a sense because you don't know what's what and why things are going on. So they try to explain everything, but if you've been watching like the other series of Moon Knight it kind of Moon Knight touches base on the gods within the Marvel Universe. And so this is what opens up to Thor, Love and Thunder about the gods. So the movie pretty much uh, starts off with Christian Bale playing as Gore. And he's with his daughter in a desert. And he speaks to the gods pretty much to help him and his daughter in a desert dry land he prays to the gods that help him no one came so his um, daughter passed away in his arms he still survived and then in the midst of the desert he seen land and he got up and walked to land inside of that land he seen water fruit and it was a god sitting there and it was the god that he wore the god's chain around his throat I mean around his neck and so he's pretty much asked the god to uh, you know help him and he lived up to the gods but the gods pretty much was arrogant and pretty much told him there's no help and basically you're going to sacrifice yourself and he mentioned there was a sword on the ground that they got from, uh, which was a sword of evil that could be used against the gods. So the sword kind of chose him and rose up in his hand. He killed the god right then and there. So then his mission was to kill all the gods. So that's why he's called Gore the God Butcher. So he set out his quest and pretty much to kill all the guys. Meanwhile, you had Thor, uh, who we all know from uh, Endgame, where he had picked up weight. And so in this one, of course, he got back and found himself where he got in shape. And he was on missions with... Guardians of the Galaxy, and of course they had them in there, and uh, he was on mission with them, but he still wasn't complete. He still was missing love, of course, with Jane Foster. Meanwhile, in Jane Foster's world, she had cancer. She found out she had stage four cancer, and she was dying, and she's trying to find a cure for herself, but she couldn't. So finally, one day, she thought of Malnamir, which was Thor's hammer that got crushed. And so, of course, that hammer that was crushed was sitting on Asgardian. Now, of course, the, we seen Thor use the hammer and Captain America use the hammer in Endgame, but remember, he took that hander from a hammer from a different time. So, nevertheless, the hammer that was crushed um, from Thor's sister, Helix, that hammer was and Asgard in a tomb or whatever. So it was like Maldemir was called for her. So when she showed up at Asgard, it was crushed into pieces and it was just the stick and the pieces start forming together. That's the end of you scene with her. Meanwhile, Thor, he left the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy pretty much. Um, they found out that somebody was killing all the gods and 
they said we need to split so that we all can uh, help them. And so when they split, one of the uh, guys that Thor went to go help was Seer. When Seer thought she was going to die, her arm was missing. They said the only way you can reach to uh, Valhalla, which is like the, um, it's like the, the afterlife for gods. You got to die in the, um, the battle. And because she didn't die, <laughs> Thor made the, the, um, comment basically, well, your, your arm probably made it there. You basically still alive. So he took her to add, um, she told him that Gord of uh, God Butcher was on his way to Asgardian. So he showed up there. And when he showed up there to help them fight, Valkyrie was there, of course. And when he showed up to help, he seen somebody whipping Malnamir. He thought Malnamir was just whipping by itself. So he basically went to rekindle. And when he went to reach out to rekindle with uh, Malnamir, which is the hammer, by the way, it went right uh, past him, and Lady Thor got it. Lady Thor is, of course, Jane Foster. So she took the Thor hammer thinking that by it making her become Lady Thor, it would heal her internally, but it really didn't. So you find out that later in the movie. Meanwhile, God the Butcher shows up, and they, you know, got this fight showdown. He took the kids of... Asgard. He was using the kids to lure Thor to get Thor's Stormbreaker, the axe, to open up the portal so he get to the gates of eternity and make the wish. And so that was the whole mission. Of course, then from there you had Thor, um, Jane Foster, and Valkyrie, along with. Um, Core, they all went to the palace of where all the guys meet. And of course, you got Zeus play as Russell Crowe. He shows up. He, and of course, Thor looks up to him and he asks him, um, Zeus to allow them to form a group of the guys to go retrieve these kids. And he pretty much said, he explained, even though he's doing it in a humorous way, but he explained how the guys work. The guys, you're responsible for your own uh, group and you don't meddle in other people's business pretty much you responsible if you're your world you're responsible for your world and no you're not to be meddling in other people's world so basically he's saying that Gore the God Butcher he's taking out low level guys so they don't need to worry about him he doesn't know where they are so pretty much Thor like nah that's not the case so when Zeus came down to speak to Thor he pretty much said that weapon he got he's afraid of that weapon and he doesn't need to cause fear with amongst the other guys and they're safe here so of course at this moment Thor broke loose and they went to uh, they wanted Zeus's Thunderbolt to fight with and Zeus threw his Thunderbolt through Korg which broke him in pieces all his rocks but his head was still alive so he just had a head just talking and so Thor took the Thunderbolt and threw it and shot it through Zeus body and then they took Zeus Thunderbolt so that comes into play later on in the film so they set on a voyage pretty much to head to the darkness where um, Gore was and he where he's hiding the kids at. So Helm Delaw, which was played by Idris Elba, we know he died from Thanos. His child was one of the kids and he was just learning how to use his power. So he had them glow in the light, um, glow, them gold glowing eyes. And so he was able to talk to Thor spiritually to show him where they was and they headed out there and of course this is where on their way there Jane pretty much expressed 
that she had cancer and they expressed their love for one another. They made it to the darkness. What they found out um, in a fight with Gore that he stabbed Valkyrie and they still made it back to Asgardian. They found out that Jane, the, by her using the power of the hammer, it was weakening her where she couldn't fight the cancer. Val, Valkyrie um, almost lost a kidney, so she was wounded. Thor had to go back by herself. So they pretty much told Jane if she used the hammer again, she would die. So he told her, we'll figure this out. I'm going to get up there and go on my own. So he went back. Now he got these kids. Now this is where it got cheesy at. The, all these kids was like kids of like as guardians so they had special powers they just didn't have them developed yet so he gave them told them go pick up little weapons and they gave them say y'all gonna have the power of thor and that was his army the kids so that's where it got cheesy at that's why i said this is maybe in the comic books oh yeah they had these goats that were screaming the whole movie so them goats was in the comics as well so that's why i said comic people they love to see them goats and everything like that nevertheless he got the fighting and he was fighting gore and he start losing, but Jane could feel him losing. So, of course, she knew what she was going to do. She took the hammer, and she showed up to help him. And she used her last bit of energy to help Thor so he could beat uh, Gore. Meanwhile, Gore made it through the lights to eternity. And Thor pretty much told him, like, you need love. I'm going to spend, if you're going to do whatever, I'm going to spend my last moments with her Jane she was dying and pretty much um left it up to Gore Gore wished for his daughter to be brought back to life so he brought his daughter back to life and Jane died so they made it back to Asgard meanwhile the deal was for Thor to take care of Gore's daughter and so at the end it showed them showing up and him raising the little girl and she called him Uncle Thor pretty much and it showed her uh, them fight her fighting with Thor out on the battlefield and everything like that so it was two post credit scenes and um, that was one of them no, that wasn't one of them. That was at the end. No, the first, my bad. The first credit, post credit scene was Zeus wasn't dead when the thunderbolt went through him. He pretty much was saying that they used to feel the God, fear the God. They don't fear us no more. We got to ring, uh, rain hair on terror on them. And so now he, I knew this was going to happen. If you know about Zeus, you know, he had a son. Who's his son? Hercules. So. He's talking to Hercules, pretty much telling Hercules he need to make people uh, respect the gods. So that's going to be Thor's next arch rival. So in the comic world, Thor and Hercules battled at times. Uh, so the second post credit scene, it showed Jane Foster at uh, Valhalla and uh, Valhalla which is the afterworld for the guys. And Hemdallah, played by Idris, um, Idris Elba, was the gatekeeper of it. And she was kind of puzzled, like, what should she do? But, you know, she became a god when she took the um, Lady Thor role. Now, in the comic world, she is brought back to life so that she can have time spent with Thor and all that. But in this world, they kill him, but they can still bring him back. So it all depends on how the financials work and all that. But that was the second post credit scene. That's it in a nutshell. I think more comic book lovers would appreciate this more than the casuals. The casuals might be um, pretty much kind of lost what was going on. I don't know how far it pushes the needle next for the next uh, Marvel movie, which is... Uh, Which is the next Marvel movie is Black Panther. So I don't know how that ties in, but we'll see. 
other than that i'm a four star rating system i'm gonna get this a two out of four stars it was decent enough to watch but enough impressed to go watch if, if that makes any sense two out of four stars subscribe to the channel like the video till next time